If you're a luxury watch collector, you probably get very excited about the idea of visiting Baselworld in Switzerland um, and exploring a lot of luxury watches. But where do microband watch collectors go? Well, I have the answer. I've just come back from two weeks in Singapore and it's a super huge community. I work with a large number of microbrand watch creators. I run a group for them. There's like 200 uh, watch creators that I deal with and pretty much the, the most concentrated hub for a single city, which has surprised me immensely, uh, is Singapore. So I'm going to point out uh, two or three uh, microbrand watch stores that specialize in microbrand watches, but there's a whole ton of stuff there. You get all the luxury or pseudo luxury brands, you know, like Breitling, Cartier, Chopard, IWB, Schaffhausen, Omega, Longines, Rolex, Tecure, Tissot, and so on, as well as the cheaper ones like Casio, Fosso, Seiko, Swatch, and, and so on. So you get a really large number of uh, generic mainstream watch stores there, uh, which are fun to visit. But you've got three microbrand watch stores, and um, one of these in particular I'm going to point out in this video. We'll get into it, to it really quickly. Um, overall, I know of about 24 microbrand watch companies and startups that are in Singapore. There are probably more than that, but 24 is the number I know about. And you've got uh, large established players that you may have ho heard of, like uh, Boulder and Zelos and Grupo Gamma. And then you've got some really new startups that are literally just getting off with their first uh, watches or just getting established on a wider field. Like there's art tourists that do some Art Deco dress watches with the uh, date at 12 o'clock. Um, Schaffen watches who do uh, custom dials with your name on them and totally custom shaped rotors and so on. So um, you're not just getting a watch, but you're getting one that's customized very much for you. So there's a ton of companies out there. So what are the three companies? Um, that, sorry, the three uh, stores that uh, you could perhaps visit. So the first one I didn't visit. Uh, there's a reason for that, which is TVG. That's not TGV as in the Urban Gentry, but TVG. Um, and TVG do a lot of kind of louder, more aggressive styled watches. There's a lot of courts in there, not my cup of tea. And some of the more expensive watches are interesting, like they have some that have um, a roulette wheel in them, for example. But they might be expensive, like $1,200 watches, but some of them have Japanese, uh, sorry, Chinese movements that are not really uh, authenticated so I don't really feel too comfortable with that one myself uh, but it's definitely got some pretty intriguing choices if you want something that's a little bit loud and out of the ordinary so worth visiting maybe. Um, the other two uh, are almost next door to each other literally one is inside a shopping mall and you walk over the other side of the row once you get out the mall uh, the side of the road once you get out the mall and then you can go in the other one. So the one that's not in the mall is Noman Watches which probably everyone knows from shopping online. Not completely micro brand, you know it's typically sub a thousand dollar Swiss uh, watches but you're gonna get micro brand alternatives at least in the same price points um, things like Squale, Steinhardt, that kind of thing. Um, and they also have a number of exclusive editions just for them. But, you know, you can shop online pretty much what you see online is in the store. So if you don't have time, that will be one I'd miss out on as well. But the one, the one kind of mecca for watch collectors, which we're going to cover in this video here, is Watch Wonderland. So um, the person who's set up Watch Wonderland November 2017, it hasn't been running that long, but it's already doing extremely well. And it's a fairly large store in the mall. Um, is MX and he's mentored a lot of micro brands which is probably why we have such a large community here right now because I'm sure there's somebody around for a number of years before Watch Wonderland but he's really done a lot of work in the last year or so just mentoring startups and helping them get established and connected to uh, factories and manufacturers and that kind of thing. So what's the store we'll cover it in the video but just to tell you really briefly it's laid out with exhibition style like a high-end luxury store so he's trying to make the point to people who are not used to uh, micro brand watches that you can have reasonable quality they're not the same as the cheap uh, you know like fossils or kind of things you're gonna get in a high street department store or fashion watches you can have maybe not the same level of quality as high-end luxury but something pretty close with you know sapphire glass Swiss movements sometimes Swiss made as well and so on so he's doing a layout to help express that he does carry a few Seikos as well just to draw people in because not everybody knows about microbrand watches but like 90% of the store is microbrand watches there's probably like 30 brands in there of which even though I know a lot of 
micro brands I only know of maybe about a third of the ones in there so it's pretty exciting for me he's got all kinds of things going on there you'll see a a station for customizing straps where you actually pick the material pick the thread and you can watch them make the strap <laughs> or come back the next day if you're in a rush uh, so it, there's a lot of things there they even run classes to teach people how to strip down an entire movement of a watch to every single basic part and then reassemble it not sure I'd sign up for that one I'll probably ruin the thing but uh, uh, kind of interesting that he does that. So I've uh, been talking for a few minutes, let's get into the video and if you have any questions just uh, I've got a link up here to the Facebook group that I run for people who collect micro brand watches so throw them up there or throw them up in um, uh, YouTube if you want and then uh, I'll see if I can address them. Thanks a lot, hope you enjoy the video. Take care. Hi, I'm with MX here who runs Watch Wonderland in Singapore so thanks nice. thanks for uh, giving me the grand tour here i think we've got a little bit of battery power left on this uh, camera as i've been using it a lot while i've been here because there's just so many watch stores here it's amazing but i really wanted to show watch wonderland because um it's a good time to show it it's a nice quiet time of the day but to me it's more like a museum you've done an excellent job because when you have these watches here it doesn't matter what the brand is you've got an explanation about the watch like the watchmaker um, or the story behind them and then you've got the watches on display so do you have any favorite pieces if we kind of go up and down fairly quickly I know oh, there's a few that I'm uh, loving the look of I think as long as they are, they are, they are stock here in the store mm -hmm. these are brands that we, we, we personally uh, they, they, they resonate with us right so um, we, we kind of pick something uh, we kind of pick watches of a very wide variety like over here you see CGL uh, regulator watches the most affordable regulator watches on the market uh, with a very different aesthetic um, over there you see some of the uh, Singapore micro brands we have Veltor that's really really new uh, I think it's coming Kickstarter soon Reverie uh, been around for a couple of years oh yeah Kim one of the mods in the Kickstarter watches group has a Reverie she really oh, loves right. that I think it might even be that one in the middle there it's the, the GT the right? one. yeah yeah the GT PM. Reverie GT because that was a Kickstarter, right? Um, I think so, because so, we get a lot through here. We've got some interesting skeleton watches almost, but they're yeah. not skeleton, they're... This, are the, this uh, one is, yeah. Uh, yep, these are the CJL Commanders. Mm -hmm. And these are the Airspeeds. Um, well, look at some of them, they're huge. They're, I have to go around the other side, but we didn't organize my uh, process there. And you're mixing in a few Seikos yeah. just to draw people in, which That's is clever. Correct. And yeah. also, the same thing really as the group, there's... Yep. Um, collectible watches in general same price yeah, point yeah. as micro brands it kind of makes sense do you uh, mostly focus on particular types of, types of seekers like the prospects line or do you do things like cocktail well, we, times we, we focus uh, on, on two range particularly okay, so uh, this is a Seiko select concept the first in the world where we focus on prospects and research and also uh, JDMs the, the intent is to show that you know micro brands independent, independent watches can also be featured alongside uh, commercial brands. And then I think the whole thing, if I'm thinking of an upmarket watch store, um, you know, you don't tend to see prices, or you've got a display cabinet yeah. as opposed to just yeah. a, a small box of watches at the back of a jeweler's. Yeah. But you're also always telling the story, because this is what makes micro brands so exciting. There's an yeah. individual creator usually, or a story behind the brand, it's small. Mm -hmm. You see you've got reserved, so you must have some limited editions as well. Yeah. Uh, these are really nice. And then um, I'm gonna sneak around this side because you said Singaporean watchmakers. So let's this is real home. Uh, Singaporean watch with ceramic, titanium, forged carbon in a very unique case silhouette. Hey, dynamics from Hong Kong. Grupo Gamma, the pride of Singapore as well. Oh, that is our own limited edition. I'm meeting with them on Wednesday evening. So oh, that's nice. kind of interesting. Mail key is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love the case. The, the one I was talking about previously, right. um, uh, Advisor watches. Yeah. Very similar style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they've already got some Advisor watches uh, mm. for some of the things I'm doing. Wow, and that's the uh, GT. Wow, look at these, they're huge. So this is interesting. I haven't seen this one before. Kentex is an uh, independent brand from um, Japan. They have been re around for a decade or so, but they have been really, really slow in expanding out of the uh, Japanese market. 
really nice um, modern takes on, on, on the Flieger Aviator silhouette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's that sunburst. I'm looking at this kind of a chocolate sunburst in the middle. It's kind of got my eye. Nice. It's really nice, even though it's a painted index, which a painted indices, which isn't my personal cup of tea. Yeah. It's nice and large, and I like the hands. That is a nice watch. It is. Yeah, definitely some interesting tastes. A little bit of everything. So, and the, I know that we'll move up to it later, but just to show around the store as we're walking. You've got a station over there for custom-made straps, which we'll definitely need to take a look at. Uh, but let's let's carry on here first, because that is that really impressed me on Friday. Anti uh, so. H by Chris Vale from the US. Beautiful vintage inspired watches. Uh, a, a modern take on a very famous vintage silhouette. Amazing colors. Uh, this is a limited edition made only for us. The Deva Fox. So you do a new limited edition once every three months or so? That's correct. And every you pick a different brand each time? Yep. The intent is to expose a, uh, a different brand each time to the local market. Mm -hmm. And you probably have a mailing list of store customers who are collectors. Yes, we do. So this is good. And you've only been in business since November? Yes, we've been uh, open since now... uh, 24th November 2017. So about three months. I mean, uh, uh, three quarters of a year. So pretty roughly. Pretty yeah. Pretty well, look at the ruby red on that one. That one is beautiful. Uh, that is the Autos oh. 2. Um, and the one at the back, the blue, it looks like a Fume as well as a Sunburst. Yes, the very a subtle Fume. Very, very subtle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely some nice watches here. Zelos. Uh, yeah. Certainly recognize Zelos. Yeah. And one of the, I don't know if they're one of the two biggest, but I get the impression that Zelos and maybe Boulder seem to be among the bigger ones. I think Zelos should be the biggest one at the moment. Uh, well, Ocean's done really well, just yeah. he sells out each time he brings something out. And I, I just love his watches. Yeah. Some very nice ones here. Oh, this one I don't know. This is an older model. Okay, so, so I got to see an older one. <laughs> you can kind of see the evolution where they start with the Eagles mm -hmm. and then they move on. A long time to the Hammerheads, to the uh, Karen Marcos, yep. the Helmsman 2. Yeah, Helmsman 2, I just love. I was looking Fine. at that the other day. I just, it's almost like a dress diver. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty I mean, much. more on a driver style as opposed Aye. to a dress watch style that becomes a diver. Yeah. It's really cool. And those meteorite dials are quite something. This is Balticus from Poland mm -hmm. uh, by Bartos. I love Bartos. He came to visit us a couple of months back, uh, had a really, really good time with him. Beautiful watches that are made a bit large, uh, but still dressy. They're 44s? 44s, not yeah. Airbonds. Yeah. You also have the volants. But he does his own straps as well. It's a little bit, maybe not my cup of tea. Oh, that's probably the sellotape stuck on, but it's a little bit um, interesting how he's done the strap there. Yeah, it's, it's an alternating brush yeah. and a polish. This is the Stardust, right? This one. The Stardust, yeah. the ladies, and this is the Stardust men. Yeah, and I know we are talking the other day, the one I really want to see, I've never seen it yet, is the uh, Kanagawa Wave. The wave. Yeah, it's this one. The, uh, the bronze yeah, wave. Yeah, this bottom one here. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. coming soon, it's coming soon. Oh, so you'll be stocking that, because that one, I just love the loom on that. It's amazing. There's, so there's, when I saw that on Kickstarter, I actually wasn't heavily buying on Kickstarter then. Yeah, and well on the campaign. Yeah, but it, it, it really got my eye. Not kind of the right price one. And this is really good. This is like new old vintage, or they just yeah, old these old? are all uh, new old stock vintage. Yep. Um, they range from the fifties to the sixties. Wow, Some of them that. are for me in the seventies as well. What's the typical price range on these? These start from about uh, about two hundred US dollars mm -hmm. to about five hundred US dollars. So that's nice and affordable. So yeah. what the thing I see with a lot of the um, microbrand watches, because the largest portion of the market's male and you've got to appeal to a large market to get big, yeah. you get very few female watches. And these, that's because right. there's this, oh, you know, the aesthetic from the past was a smaller watch, yeah. you could actually wear these if you wanted microbrand, but not vintage, but, but almost, I mean, they are vintage, but you know, mm -hmm. you haven't got the vintage wear and tear, which is really cool. Yeah, that's true. Uh, these are really, really hard to find. And they've kind of, they've also got stories behind them. That's yeah. really interesting. And they're hard to get, right? You, you have like cool stuff like uh, vintage jumping hours, uh, vintage uh, set racing style dosa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that one's really nice. Yeah, definitely. So, um, how are we doing? Uh, let's see. We've got a 
It's a really nice store. It really does feel like a museum. You've got all these posters you've done yourself. It's definitely got a good stamp on it. And you were showing me this watch while I was kind of charging the battery yeah. here on this camera. And it's just, just like one of the coolest watches I've ever seen. This is a uh, Azimuth Twin Turbo. Mm -hmm. It was released a couple of years ago uh, by Azimuth, the first micro brand from Singapore, which has then, you know, scaled up and went and went to a much uh, larger scale. Yeah. So inside this, you have two. Uh, you can't really see it, but you know, we have two vintage Cartier ladies' watch movements. Mm -hmm. That is has to be one of the coolest watches I've seen here. To and that was the, you were saying that what made this even more interesting that this was the first Singapore micro brand from 15 yeah. years ago. 15 years ago. I mean, what a way to start. I mean, you know, just to have stuff like this come out. Yeah. It's it's the kind of thing that it's like definitely a conversation piece. Um, really love that. So this table you see up here, mm -hmm. um, on alternate weekends we, we convert it into a watchmaking workshop mm -hmm. table where we host classes. So the lights will be out, the tools will be out and um, we get to make your own watch and bring the watch home. Yeah. Strap making corner, our, our minor service corner as well. So from here you will see our head craftsman, Kairu. Uh, he's making some straps at the moment. Okay. Yep. Don't mind me being a bit nosy here. Ha. So all the straps that uh, we sell here, mm -hmm. well, most of the straps that we sell here are handmade here by Kairu. Uh, With different materials, so different I materials. see you've got stingray, stingray uh, liz lizard, uh, liz lizard uh, uh, water python, alligator. Uh, and different styles of stitching. You've got these threads, but you can get other threads into if people yeah. ask. Sure. Yeah. And then you not only do you make straps to size for the watches, but I mean, you just completely shocked me with that. I'm going to call it a 3D machine in my ignorance, but you've got a machine right. to measure parts oh. of a watch so you can actually do totally custom ends in the straps. That's right. So that's a 3D printer. Yeah. So what, what Cairo will do would be that he will, he will um, draw out the ending of the mm -hmm. watch in 3D. He will get the ending printed out, something like this something like this that fits um, to the end of your watch right and then you wrap that around it and the eventual strap will look like this so you can have a totally custom strap not just a standard lug width but absolutely any kind of lug end that's correct uh, so if you um what's one of the watches that i'm getting in that's going to have a custom lug end? oh of course it's another singapore micro brand Schaffen watches they have a Schaffen very watches. custom yep. end so really, I'm kind of stuck with a bracelet or by their strap, but I could uh, come here yeah. and say, hey, Chef and Watch, can yeah. you just do a different end for me and then I can have a custom, whatever, like yeah. Python strap or whatever it is that I feel like. That is really cool. Have you won awards here by any chance? Sorry? Have you won any awards for no, the stuff that you're doing here? We're not too concerned about awards at the moment. We're yeah. only concerned about getting things started right. We're still very young at this. But, it, but I'm sure you'll get there because you're doing Hopefully. such a service. Wow, look at this. That's uh, an unusual material for a, a watch roll. It's kind of like a watch roll, but not. It's okay, a so you've got watch some, roll. The yeah. snakeskin one. Well, how, snakeskin. how much is something like that? Do you know? This is about uh, 200 US dollars. That's pretty cheap considering okay. the amount of snakeskin you've got there. Oh, that is not real snakeskin. That is actually uh, uh, a, 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 a false snakeskin, yeah. Oh, that's really oh, it cool. It looks quite legit. Yeah. It's yeah. still genuine leather though. Yeah, that is... Look at that, you've got a smaller one. Smaller ones. Yeah. These are our limited editions. This is Season Zero mm -hmm. with a, a Zalos hammerhead with a rally chapter ring. Season One with the Grupo Gamma Peacekeep, uh, Peacekeeper. Two color variants. And we are currently on Season Two. Is the tail yep. popular? Uh, it's an unusual color. This is fully sold out. We sold, yeah. sold out of this in about two weeks. Yeah. Oh, I, I bet because when you see it, and I, if, I think once people have a few watches, they start thinking about what to wear, and they want something that's exactly. different. So you get a color that they don't have. Exactly. That's really something, and I just love this Celos, the custom one. It's really nicely done. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then you've got some uh, uh, MN uh, straps. Erica's originals. Erica's originals. Yeah. Okay. And then um, some tools, but they're not. The, 
basic were, tools. Yeah, yeah. you see they're basic, but I get mine on, <coughs> on AliExpress. So uh, <laughs> they're even more basic, a little yeah. plasticky. But look at some of the. This is not basic. This is a, um, a stamping machine, uh, a yeah. really old one that we bought. NOS as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for our own use. So on top, you have some tools from. Uh, so that's more like display, again, the museum aspect. Yeah. We are working yeah. on something with this anymore. Yeah, I mean, this kind of thing I see a lot of online. Yeah. But. Um, but you've got the you know reasonable quality tools as opposed to the, the cheap end. I mean, it's not it's not fancy, they're not but professional, it works. but yeah, they're amateur tools. Yeah, but that's really nice. Right. You get a little bit of history there almost with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, I, I like the museum feel of this place. It, it really helps show people who are more used to luxury watches yeah, that yeah. micro brand can be as you, you're doing the subtle quality thing. Exactly. exactly. Um, so you've got Hirsch straps. Hirsch straps. Oh, oh wow. I, mean, I don't get to see this kind of thing. I, didn't, I missed this completely last time. Yeah, so I'm the, buying online and yeah. I get a lot of trouble matching the colors. They never quite match when I get the strap yeah. delivered. Somebody can just bring their watch in here, take a look around. Just and, pair it up. Yeah, and if away. they don't have what they want exactly, but they've, yeah. they've got you know the color they like, they can go over to your corner over there. And yeah. even if you don't have the right material, you'll probably order it in. Yeah. That's nice. So do people come to you with Pantone colors and things like that? Uh, to, to not, not, not yet, not yet. They might, they might soon, but... Uh, yeah. I guess we can do them. We can do them. So these were controversial in our group because there's some, some fake clones from China, but these, oh, are, right. the, these are the real ones. So. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jones watches from uh, London. Yeah. Lovely, lovely people. Every single watch is made in collaboration with a different artist. Uh, they are not the easiest to tell time. But that is the, the brand man did, right? Yeah. To tell everybody to slow down and, and live in the moment. So I just love these uh, two playing card pieces. Ah, yeah, could be a his, it could be a his and hers. I'm not a fan of the strap, but you could again do something custom. A yeah. little leather strap would sure. be nice on that. For sure. And you've got uh, some skulls are popular, I would think. The two series amazingly popular. Yeah. Mm. It's also add on, my favorite Chinese brand. Ah, Maison Celadon. Right. Beautiful, beautiful Duché dolls. And then you have Boom Automaton here. It's a new brand from Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a daylight calculator. A daylight calculator. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've, I just I don't didn't tell you, but I collect complications. I'm trying to get. If as soon as you just told me about one, I want this yeah. watch. <laughs> so it's six hundred and eighty-eight Singaporean dollars. It's about five hundred bucks yeah. US. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. The dial's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like the things, even just old fashioned things like telemeters. Telemeters, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and that, that also is more historically correct because Rick's right. watch has got their start in the First World War. And then that would be like a gunnery officer with his telemeter yes, or something. Avantu exactly. um, Vardi from Taiwan, uh, founded by Eric Ye. This guy is a genius. He, he really knows his watches. This, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can see through the magnifying glass. So the night apertures on, on the dial actually uh, contain heat sensitive pain. So it tell you the current temperature of your surroundings. Yeah. Really, really cool stuff. Ventus Singaporean, uh, sister brand Ventus, I should have, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I should have paid more attention when he, uh, Elsham bought those to show me, but I was looking more at the Zalos because right. that's the known yeah. one. And then this is an interesting uh, fun piece. Symbol. It, it sells so well that we only have one piece left, where we mm -hmm. normally have about 20 different variants. Interesting. Yeah. And then... Um, Dan Henry for Brazil. Dan Henry, wow. And, yeah. then you, um, and then you've got a... So you've got a very selective range of GMTs, right? Do you have any... I mean, do you just try and focus on mechanical GMTs? Um, or do you do mecha quartz a lot? We, we, are, we are okay with mecha quartz. About about two percent of the watches here are quartz. Yeah. The the rest 90, 97 and eight percent are fully mechanical, be it hand winding or automatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I like this kind of vintage style. We got yeah, uh, mother of watches. pearl dials mother here. Pearl. So some of the Russians. Uh huh. Old school Russians. Uh, are those um, crystal or is it uh, real ruby or? No, it's just just crystal. Crystals. Yeah. yeah. Crystals. Run. What school Russians? I love the back. Look at the decoration on that one. Hi. So automatic chronographs. You also have um, mm -hmm. MBY. 
who are quite quiet these days. So you got right next to something a little bit, you know, chic. You got something more. Yeah, it's interesting that you just got such a lot of variation along here. We, we try not to organize them by like you know. Styles. So they all mix up, yeah. yeah mix up, mm -hmm. it's fun that way. That way you got to browse everything, which is good for business. <laughs> I guess. And I, of course, and and um, interesting. We're moving along to uh, this Orodis. Yeah. So Orodis is again a Singaporean. Uh, one of my favorite watches over here. The TV, the TV shaped case. It is wide, so it's a big watch, but because it's short, you can fit on any any resize. Yeah. A lot of interesting stuff. Loom Tech, yep. uh, old school, they're the OGs of uh, micro brands. Mm -hmm. But really they got good. some nice pieces, like this nice. uh, looks like bronze or brass at the end. It's a, it's a, it's a fading, but uh, it's yeah. beautiful with the V series. We have the combat cases, yeah. very classic. Yeah, look, at, look at the huge wide bezels on this case, the yeah. way it folds down. That's, that's really nice. I mean, I'm enjoying the kind of uh, stainless steel one. That's uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and I somehow might maybe I missed them, but I thought you had in here. Oh, what's the French brand I'm thinking of? Uh, Bilac. Ah, uh, uh, Satori Bilac. Yeah. Uh, we, on oh, yeah, well, we'll we'll find those, but those yeah. were cool as well. Uh, multi French as well, using a mix yep. of. Uh, so not these Chinese movements. Uh, very good so not Baltic Time, just Baltic, because I know there's two different brands and it confuses me yeah, every time. There's Baltic, Baltic Time, there's Baltic. Um, and Balticus, which we looked yeah. at already. Um, yeah. So Baltic, they, they, they have done vintage really, really well. Everything from the acrylic crystal to the uh, indices. Mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I... Just... Uh, and you've got some colourful pieces here. Are these hand-painted? No, they're not. They're no. Not. Okay, and then we're back to these, which we saw. That's really cool. So I really appreciate the tour, and uh, I'm probably going to do a bit of window shopping now. So I'll end the video. But thanks for making the time.